today we're going to go back to basics. We're going to take a glimpse into farming and how a regular office worker took on the unlikely task of transforming himself into a farmer. How did this BPO employee escape the 9 to 5 and put up a farm? Let's find out. So hi everyone, starting off today's vlog by introducing to you Mr. Adrian Aquino. He is the founder and operator of Off The Grid Farms, OTG Farms. These are farms that are operating in Cavite and Palawan and they are growing an extensive number of crops, fruits and vegetables and they're supplying different hotels, restaurants in the Cavite, Manila and Palawan area. So hi Adrian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. I'm honored. I'm flattered. <laughs> Thanks for being my second guest. And I've started a series called How to Escape Your 9 to 5. And my first uh, vlog was about myself. The title was How I Escaped My 9 to 5 to Live in Palawan. And this is something that's actually applicable to you because you're also uh, living in Palawan. So I know before you got started on your farm, uh, you also had a 9-to-5 job, you had an office job. Can you tell us more about what you were doing before you got into farming? I was employed just like anyone else. I spent 10 years um, in the BPO industry. So that's 10 years of uh, day shift, night shift, mid shift, you know, 24-hour shift. This is the nature of the BPO industry. So maintaining client relationships for the company. Basically, business development for them. Yeah, man, that was uh, our, our office then was in Salcedo Village. We were five years into that. They moved to Pacific Star, Makati pa rin. Things just got more hectic, you know, yeah, more, yeah. More, more clients, more work to do, more hours at the office. The thing about that though is you know, you're just always in the office. You know, yeah, you're in your yeah. cubicle, you're in your conference room. You just look out the window to <laughs> see what the rest of the world is doing. <laughs> You're wondering what the rest of the world is doing. Uh, well, well, yeah, man. You're well, wondering you're... what it's what it's like in another part of the country. You know, you're wondering. <laughs> I wonder if it's raining there. I wonder if it's raining here. So these are the thoughts that went through your mind while you were in your cubicle. Um, oh, oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, I was also jealous of people who you know, mobile. You know, people who get to go around for work. Kaya niya yung mga may meeting lang sa ibang building na yung na ako. Pero yung I can relate, but, yeah, man. I mean, when I was in BPI and then there were like two BPI uh, offices there, I cherished having to walk across, you know, just, just to be able to feel the sun and kite my it was it was fine, so. And yeah, man. Uh, your job, was it something that you liked? I, my BPO job, yeah, I learned to like it eventually. You know, at first, I was quite hesitant to, to work with, you know, it's such a fast-paced industry. Because, you know, me, man, I'm laid back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was the time in my life where I had to learn these things. Client services, client relationships, managing different personalities, stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for the people out there not too familiar with OTG Farms, could you tell us like what, what actually are the fruits, vegetables, and crops that you're making? Yeah, basically we grow varieties of vegetables, man. Uh, we started with salad greens. Like lettuce, different kinds of lettuce, different kinds of herbs and all that. Until we tried other vegetables as well, other fruits as well. Mm -hmm. Our farm in Cavite and our farm in Palawan, basically they grow very similar crops. Okay. Um, we, we grow what's in demand. We grow what our partners ask us to grow. Mm -hmm. We grow what what's hard to find basically. What, what or what what always runs out. Okay. So these are these are very easy to grow. You know, romaine lettuce very easy to grow. But mm -hmm. is it always out there? No, especially in places yeah. like Palawan. You know? So many hotels in Palawan. So so many hotels. So many motels and restaurants. Yeah. But do they have all the ingredients? Not all the time. Mm -hmm. So that that's the gap I'm trying to fill. Just just to backtrack a little. Um... How did you get into farming and was this something that you started just as a hobby or was it something that you went into and say, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it for business? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> uh, 
at first it was just basically curiosity man like I, I was really curious about how, how things grow you know even even when I was a kid I was, I was always joking to my family that mm. you know, farmer na lang ako ayoko na mag university farmer na lang ako ganyan. but I wasn't serious then yeah and then, <laughs> and then so you know I mean I, I started getting curious about it and then I started trying it out on my own you know small gardening stuff um until I started attending seminars, okay. and then That's when you the, the people, here. yeah, yeah, the, the people that I met in these seminars, and they started to encourage me. Then you know, it's something you can pursue for them. There's, you can make money here. You just have to do it the right way. You, know? you, yeah. you have to, you know, there, there are certain things that you have to go through. There are certain practices that you have to make. You're gonna make mistakes along the way. You're gonna gut it out if you know what you're doing. If you study your market, then it, it could work. And before this, you weren't in a in an environment that you were working with your hands. You were no, you no. just had an office job. Yeah, man. <laughs> when I had the office job, the back of my head was, you know, what's it like to do other things? You know, mm-hmm. what's it like to work outside for a change? You know, yeah. I mean, what's what's it like to do something completely different from yeah. what you're doing now? Will I be making as much money? Will I be having as much fun? Will I be having more fun? Yeah, so I guess you were naturally curious about basically what's out there. What Are there any like organizing bodies or seminars that you actually recommend that you found very useful? There are a lot out, yeah. out there that are very useful actually. And the funny thing is, you know, it's no secret what uh, these big farms do, this, these more reputable farms do. Some of these things that we do are on YouTube, you know, mm. so... Yeah, basically it's, anything it's, you can it's, learn. I guess some people really just like to... They prefer it being demonstrated right in front of them. The person is right there to ask immediately when they think of this question. Then mm. These seminars that I've attended, and they're great. See, see Costales Farms, these guys are very reputable in the game uh, they uh they're one of the more reputable ones same with uh see herbana farms by mm-hmm. gil Tarandang. Um, okay. this guy who works out of laguna okay. he's one of the oldest in the game and he actually helped me uh, he helped me a lot and yeah. then there's uh, th- th- these guys i follow now also see down to earth basically they are what i aspire to be <laughs> okay okay you mentioned you were starting to attend the seminar you were practically getting started as a hobby and then um, how long until you decided that you were gonna, you know, start planting? Yeah, it, it, it took a while. Maybe I, I really don't know how long it took, but it, it, it took a while because I, I was hesitant. I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't want to leave my you know the comfort zone of Makati. Yeah. <laughs> Aircon sa office, but my Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. Yeah, I decided to bite the bullet when you know I, when I had a family and so I had the support of mm. my dad yeah. who you know I had to tell him I'm resigning you know, <laughs> I'll be a farmer wow surprisingly he was very supportive and you know I took that as a sign uh, it's gonna be okay <laughs> mm. win or lose succeed or not don't succeed it's gonna be okay it's still worth a try yeah okay so, luckily I'm still here <laughs> Do you have any estimate like how many years that actually took? A whole year, man. I mean, a whole year of contemplating, a whole year of research, a whole mm. year of um, researching, not just by myself, but with the wife, of course, because yeah. family is going to be affected first, by a decision first. like this. Right? She was going to go into so, it as well. Um, during this one year, were, were you already in operation or is it something that uh, you did completely after your job? Uh, siguro in that year of uh, before jumping into it, I was already. Siguro pag weekend, you know, I uh, spend the weekend in Laguna in like a, okay. I'd attend a weekend seminar or something. Okay. okay. And then I, siguro sa office, I was slowly giving hints to my superiors, giving hints to my colleagues. Na, hey, you know, I'm thinking about leaving. I'm thinking about yeah. trying something else. I remember feeling ashamed to say <laughs> na, you know, when they ask me, what are you I was ashamed to say, I want to try farming. Because, you know, yeah. I mean, some people would think that there's no At the time, sure, yeah. I, I felt also, there's no money. Yeah, after that year, when I decided to resign, uh, um, parang things were already in place to 
to start farming. You know, I was there was already land in mine. There was already a team in place. You know, I was, okay. there was a team I was ready to get. Some people I was ready to employ. Those were things that I had put in place. Just you had a business plan already. Uh, a team in place. Uh, I knew I couldn't do this on my own. You know, I mean, mm. I mean, just digging holes for farming. Here up na You know, you, yeah. you need. You need skilled work for that, you know. And yeah. if, you were, if, if it takes a skilled person to dig a 10 meter bed, if you were, for example, it takes them 30 minutes, it's probably going to take me uh, half the day to do it. Yeah, yeah man. So for yeah. sure, that, that I, I needed help um, a lot of the time. I, I don't feel like a farmer. You know, I, I've got a long way, a lot to learn, a whole lot more to learn about farming. I'm no expert. It's basically my team that does the magic, you know. It's, it's my team that does the hard work. Yeah. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm as much as I'd love to call myself a farmer. I'm still very much, you know, a salesman or a, yeah. a businessman, you know. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're the you're the orchestrator of everything. I mean, just, just to backtrack a little, um, what got you to that point? You, you wanted to resign and you wanted to really start the farm already. Was there a was there a trigger or a, a milestone that you got uh, to uh, for you to say, okay, I'm going to start doing this? Two things. Two things that I can remember right now. Um, one was the go signal from my wife. You know, okay. She said, go for it, Adrian. Fuck yeah. it. Do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so that was one. And then another one was um, when the team fell in place. You know, the team sort of fell on my lap. They somehow landed on, in my control, and I took that as a sign. Hey, you know, you're. This is something that you've been waiting for. You know, you've been looking for these guys, and they're here now. Mm-hmm. So give it a try. I mean, you know you're gonna get results with these guys. I know that I'm gonna get the yield that I want. I know that I'm gonna get the the goals that I want with regards to farming with these guys. Mm-hmm. So I. I took that as a sign. I'll go, go for it. Okay. How did you you keep referencing your team? How did you actually find them? I met them in one of the seminars I attended before. It's not like I you know pirated them from their junk shop. You know, I I made friends with them. You know, when I was an intern in that farm, I sila ko We were okay. we were together every day. You mentioned an internship that you actually did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I did a short internship with uh, my friend Hill Arandang ah, okay, his farm okay. in When you mentioned that earlier. A whole year, man. A, a whole year after I heard from them again. Mm-hmm. They were saying, they, they reached out to me saying, oh, they're looking for work. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were wondering if they could come work for me, if there's you know some work I could give yeah. them. Okay. And that's when I took them in. That's basically when I thought, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and then yeah, at the same time, my, my my friend who's my managing partner now in the Cavite farm, okay. he just acquired land in in Cavite, mm-hmm. and you know he was looking for someone to develop it. Things sort of falling into place. What's the setup like? Yes, there, there are farm technicians, and then mm-hmm. we give them other incentives. Basically, they 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 get a cut from the from the earnings that we make from the project. Uh, like you mentioned, did they have performance incentives, like profit share? Yeah, 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 right. So, no, we, 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 try, we try, like any other company, like any other group, like yeah. any other employer. Okay. Mga performance you man. <laughs> I mean, I, stuff you learn. One your thing career. I learned from from you know the yeah, it was guys. This is basically what we're doing. I'm trying to get you know a gauge of whether you enjoy your job or not. You know, I'm trying to get a gauge of you know what. You mentioned that uh, you work with partners and based on demand. So what's what's the setup like? Like like a partner would actually tell you what they need, like you know, romaine lettuce and all on one side. So it, it's actually right. yeah. It's not always a, a, a restaurant or a hotel. You know, sometimes it's a salad kit maker, or it's a, okay. sometimes it's a jam maker, like a dragon fruit jam, or mm-hmm. dragon fruit paste, or tomato paste, or something like that, or pesto sauce, you know, or basil sauce, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Sometimes it's it's a special product. How do we we we, we meet them through our man through referrals through social media friends are a big help friends and family because they mm-hmm. you know, they, they refer me and they, they think of their cousin who's trying to be a farmer and then they refer me I, sorry I, I didn't really know about that like uh i thought i thought usually like you know if you put up a farm then usually you have 
a few crops that you specialize in. But I didn't know that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. you could actually part uh, partners come in and say this is what we want. Are there projects that you say no to like like it just doesn't fit the environment? It doesn't fit. Uh, oh, naman, the yeah. There, there are projects that are too big for us. Let's say, hindi kakasya sa farm yung gusto nila yeah. ng volume. Yeah. We can't do it. For example, like, I've had people come up to me ask me if they can grow uh, broccoli okay. in Cavite or yeah. strawberries in Cavite or grapes in Cavite. I mean, and if we dedicate our whole time to it, it's good or fine. We could do it. Yeah. But it's not why to do so. So, okay. you know, we, those are the types of projects that we don't pursue. Okay, so we're back with Adrian. He just had to switch some locations for better connection. Are there favorite projects or favorite crops that you actually like to grow because they're easy or your farms have just been better equipped to take on? Yeah, good question. Honestly, I, I like the ones that make us money. And <laughs> these are basically... <laughs> these are basically... Well, it, it, it also depends on... It's a customer. I mean, yeah. I mean, so, someone someone could let's say like a customer could like something as simple as romaine lettuce, you know. Okay. But they order like a like hundred kilos a week. So, of course, I want that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other crops also like vegetables or herbs, like for example, say one soy, okay. cilantro. Okay. Uh, it, very, very popular, but it's not around all the time. You know, people don't find it in the grocery easily. Going back to your question about yeah. favorite crops, the it could be something really simple, but if it's ordered in large volumes, then you know, I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, so also like the the, the high value crops, like you know, let's say Toscano kale or mm. arugula, mga ganyan. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I like those myself. You know, they're, they're, they're favorites of mine. I, I like to eat them myself. Arugula, I love very much. I, I could eat it every day. Yep. You know, but I know also there are a lot of people out there who like, you know, they they look for these things. Mm -hmm. They try to find suppliers for these things, constant suppliers, reliable suppliers, suppliers who grow them naturally. You know, suppliers who don't put pesticides on mm -hmm. on or fertilizers on their crops. So. You know, it, it could be something as simple as that, but if, let's say, I make a connection with someone who's really happy with the simple vegetable or the simple herb that I'm able to give them, yeah. that could become my favorite also. Yeah. <laughs> so it really depends then. Eh? depends on the cost. Yeah, man. Yeah. You mentioned something like about uh, pesticide-free and like fertilizer. So is that like one of your pillars na your organic yeah. farming? Yes, man, absolutely. Uh, we take pride in that. We don't okay. put pesticides in our in our plants. We don't, you know, we, we don't put anything that would be harmful, not just for the person consuming it, but for, for the environment. You know, call, call it as call, call it cheesy, call it lame, call it yeah. call it what you want. But yeah. you know, I I believe that you know such substances are harmful okay. to the environment, and something that we try to you know incorporate into the company into the into the vision. It's something that we're very passionate about. They're not very easy to do. Sometimes it's not practical, you know, but okay, we, okay. we really try. Hopefully we can get somewhere with it one day. <laughs> okay. That's good. I mean, yeah, uh, I, I guess that's something that you've incorporated into the values of your company, your brand. Uh, despite, you know, bulking up orders, you're still trying to espouse by those uh, corporate values that, that you really want to stand for. Okay. We try to uh, use sustainable packaging and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, we, we try not to use heavy machinery in the farm. Actually, when in the start, man, when we were building the farm, everything was by hand. We didn't have to go to tractor, we didn't have to go to bulldozer. No, man, we, we did the labor, we did the labor ourselves. Because, because it was better that way. Yes, okay. and cheaper also. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that always helps. <laughs> yeah, but you know, parang that's where we learned also. We learned that it's backbreaking work. We learned that we're gonna have to work under the sun. We learned that we're gonna sweat our butts off. We're gonna break our backs doing these things. We're gonna get darker. We're gonna get burned. We're probably gonna lose a lot of weight. 
hey man, it's what I wanted, di ba? I mean, yeah, exactly. Gusto, ginusto mo to, di ba? You, you, wanted to be, you wanted to be out of the office. You wanted that's to what you were outdoors. wondering about inside the office. So, yeah, man. that's exactly what you're getting. And, and uh, it, it does yeah. come with its pains also. Uh, some labor, but that, that's all part of it. So, yeah, yeah that was go- going back to I, I just want to I just want to go yeah, back to the go ahead, go ahead. the zero waste that actually started in Palawan basically when 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 we go to the provinces when I go to the provinces trash gets to me I, I hate seeing trash where you're not supposed to see it beach when you go to a place like El Nido and then, and then you see Ang ganda ng landscape, ang ganda ng view mo. Yeah. Pero pag sakay mo sa bangka, yung you look at the water, may plastic yan, may sachet ng palmoli. It's there that we decided to incorporate that belief into the business. You know, try, let's try not to use plastic. Let's try not to, you know, that would bring damage to the environment, that would hurt, that would pollute, basically add to the already growing problem of pollution, di ba? So, I, I admit, man, it's not perfect. We haven't, yeah we, yeah, we haven't done it to perfection. Of course, of course. But we're trying. Yeah, <laughs> we're really trying, man. That's good. Hopefully, one day it shows. But you're actually looking out for something else other than just the business, other than making profits, and we try. But that's I mean, not possible, right? Especially in a place like Palawan, you know. I mean, yeah. the last frontier. Exactly. Right? You you know this, man. You you yeah. have businesses there too, mm-hmm. you know. So. We also join um, events that you know are supportive of such zero waste themes. You binhi, you binhi yeah. mindful market, the, the binhi, the tarabidan. The... When I joined those events, it, it, it encouraged us to think zero waste yeah. and not to use plastic. Yeah. Overall, what's been the highlight of all this for you? What's been your favorite thing about being in business and doing, you know? being in touch with, with all of this it's honestly for me it's the simple things it's it's really the simple things the simple things like being outdoors you know the simple things like breathing fresh air when you're working <laughs> that's a big the simple deal. things like getting your yeah the simple thing yeah. like getting your hands dirty mm-hmm. um to some you know it, it's nothing but to yeah. me it means a lot Co- coming from uh employment that put me in a room for the whole week, basically. Yeah. It differs. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even just five days a week. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a BPO industry. Indie, indie five days a week. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, seven days a week. Yeah. 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And I guess also meeting people. Mm-hmm. Meeting the meeting like-minded people. Yeah. But yeah, man. The, the little things. Mm-hmm. The little things. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, once you're in business also, you, you kind of run into people who have the same mindset and also but what who will let you expand your horizon yeah man and the, the, what the, what's good about the people that you meet along the way in this you know, I guess in any industry if they've been doing it longer than you they've encountered the same problems that you have man they've they, the, the pests that they encounter and the weather problems that they encounter the water problems yeah <laughs> It's good to learn from these people. What's in store next for OTG Farms? Keep changing, man. Keep evolving. We just for for OTG Farms. You know, hopefully we could expand our client base, meet more people, sell more products, sell more vegetables, mm-hmm. um, make more mistakes, and learn more things along the way, man. Yeah. I mean, Are you looking at more farms in the near future? Well, we're looking to help people build more farms. It's, it's great to have friends you know, who ask you, they, they start to show you interest mm-hmm. in agriculture, into farming because parang, well, it's a pandemic, di ba? They, they need to grow their own food now, now's the time to do it. So, you know, it, 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 it's sad that it has to be at this time, but you know, it's great to see people showing more interest in it. Um, basically, people like us, man, people yeah. got employed in the corporate world for X number of years, so, yeah. you know. It's all new to us. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. You touched up uh, quickly on that, about the pandemic. So, has this season been... It, it's been harder for most people, but uh, for you guys, yeah. has it been harder as well? And how, have you have you tried... Have you needed to change anything? Yeah, it's been hard also because um, a lot of our clients... Um, that's right. That's right. Fortunately, they had they had to close shop or they had to decrease their you know their their volume their volume of purchase. You know, 
we focus more on households during this pandemic. A lot of growers or you know um, suppliers really had to go to the market directly, set up their IG pages, set up their Facebook. Yeah. So, so that's that, that's what that's been the same for you, I guess. Yeah, man, it's absolutely the same. Um, I guess also um, one change that we're seeing is that a lot of people are there's more people now who want to build their own farms. That's a good thing because. You know they're 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 showing interest. You know, hire us or not, at least they're, inter- they're interested in. Yeah. yeah. What's your advice for people? Uh, people wanting to get out, or maybe not get out. Maybe try something new. Maybe find something different. Just jump into it. If just you're jump interested, into it. Yeah, man. Just jump into it. Try it out. For those who want to get out of the cubicle, get out of their nine to fives. If, if it's something that you really want to do, try it out, man. Yeah. You're not gonna regret it. Yeah. And if you fail at it, um, trust me, there's always something to go back to. <laughs> you don't have to fail heavily right away anyway. You can try a little at a time if it works out. If there's any traction, if it's uh, if, if, yeah, man. There's, if there's a little bite, then great. But uh, I think, yeah, like you said, basically people just need to jump into things, try things. And what better time to try than now? Uh, yeah, man. Every the rules are being written. Might be scary. It's, it's, it's scary to some. You know, honestly, I'm still scared. Right? Yeah. Like, sometimes I wake up every morning. And, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get a normal job. You know, honestly, I, I I know that if I if if I did that, if I dropped everything I'm doing now with farming and just went back to what I was doing before, I know I'd be a very sad person. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's that's ultimately what what's important anyway. I mean, the happiness and you know you you feeling connected to what you want to do. And how how can our listeners viewers find out more about OTG Farms? Yeah, man. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. OTG Farms. You know, you can con- contact us there. You can contact me there. Um, farming related. You can ask me. Um, we're also on. Um, Eat Grocer, it's a zero waste online platform. Okay. So you can you can buy our veggie bundles there. Um, we deliver around Metro Manila, man, free of charge for minimum order. So. All right. So. Yeah, man. So, we, uh, thanks again, Adrian, for joining us. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you have anything farming related that you want to ask, man, go ahead and ask. I'd be glad to help. I'd be glad to answer your questions. Yeah, for the, for those looking to yeah, get into farming, you can reach out to Adria and ask them in social media directly. Or if you want, ask it through the comment section of this of this uh, video through YouTube. So let us know. 